Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship here at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Cherry Hill. My name is Pastor Josh, and we are so excited that you've decided to join us during this time of worship whether it be Sunday morning, whether it be later that day, later in the week, or even later than that, we are just thrilled that you have decided to worship with us. We want to let you know a little bit about what you can expect as you worship with us. It is the first Sunday of the month, so we will have communion. So we want to make sure that we invite you to be able to grab your bread and juice. We also wanted to let you know that we have opportunities for you to participate, which be our call to worship and our prayer time. We'll hear a children's chat from Pastor Andrew. We'll hear some great music from Ellen and Carlene. We'll hear some scripture, and we'll also uh, wrap up our sermon series about our roots, our Methodist traditional roots, as we end with a sermon on communion. Well, friends, again, we are so excited that you've decided to join us. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me for our opening prayer. God, we thank you for all the ways you nourish us in this life, our bodies, our spirits, and our minds. We especially thank you today for the gift of communion, the bread and cup Jesus promised would be his presence with us. Though this is a mystery to us, we trust it, we receive it, and we are grateful for the way it connects us to you and one another. In Jesus' name we pray, 
Amen. And now let's recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Please join with me for our call to worship. We come to worship and gather around God's table. We come to remember God's grace. We come to remember the story of God's love. We come to be strengthened to share God's story. We come to be reminded that all are welcome here. We are all made in the image of God and are called to be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Amen. Hey kids, it's Pastor Andrew. Have you ever been invited to go somewhere? If so, that's great. So we get invited to go to birthday parties, uh, get-togethers at family and friends' house, sometimes even weddings. For example, my wife and I got this in the mail the other day. And this is an invitation, which as you can see here, has a date and a time of where we need to be for a wedding we need to go to. And as I'm looking around us today, I, I noticed that we have a celebration coming on, happening today at the church. And that is communion. And communion is just a celebration of Jesus as our Savior. And it's a celebration that we are part of God's family and God loves us so much that God forgives us and we didn't have to do anything to deserve it. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus and that we get to celebrate him and his love for us when we receive communion. Thank you that everybody is invited to this celebration. Amen.
Friends, at this time, we're going to partake in communion together. So we invite you to grab any uh, bread that you may have. Maybe you have toast and you're watching this with breakfast. And we invite you to grab juice if possible. If not, uh, the coffee that you're probably drinking uh, is just fine. But as we take time now and we set aside time as we reflect on communion, we're offered this reminder that communion started with Jesus simply gathering with his friends. That Jesus spent time with them. They were talking and celebrating a holiday and there was probably a lot of energy that had been taking place. And then things likely got quiet. As Jesus took things that were ordinary and then makes them extraordinary, just as God has a habit of doing in our lives. So as Jesus was sitting and lounging around the table with his friends, Jesus just simply took some bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat. And then when the supper came to a conclusion, Jesus took the cup, again, gave thanks to God. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it. And Jesus offered some important words, which is why we still today take time and do communion. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And that's, that's why we do this now. Friends, this time at communion is a reminder of grace. It's a reminder of God's love. It's a reminder of forgiveness. And it's also a reminder that we all have a seat at the table. Friends, we're going to invite you to grab your bread at this time. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. We invite you to take your cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Friends, now that we have partaken in communion together, may we not leave the lessons and principles at the communion table, the principles of grace, of God's love, of forgiveness, of welcoming to all. May we not leave it at the table, but bring it with us as we go out into the world for the rest of this week. Amen. Friends, we have a couple of announcements this week for you. The first is we are going to be taking a collection for Tanzania, uh, the For Tanzania mission from Greater New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania conferences, as we're looking to be able to build a church and to provide livable wages for clergy. And so we invite you to partner with us and to join us for that. If you have any questions about that, you can feel free to contact the office. The information is on the screen. If you would like to give online, you can just simply go to our website, www.saumcnj.org, and you will see a thing, um, a little give uh, option. And when you click on that, it will take you to Vanco which there will be a space for the For Tanzania uh, fund that we are looking to try to raise $500 for. We want to let you know of a couple of other uh, announcements. Uh, the first is uh, IHOC, which is um, a homeless ministry. We are working to, with them to be able to restart that. And so James Spangler, who now serves on the board for that, he will be doing the mall walk on Sunday, February 25th. If you are interested in, in sponsoring James or walking uh, with James, the walk begins at uh, 2.30. And so uh, you can feel free to contact the office and we'll let James know. So if you want to walk in the mall walk or you want to sponsor uh, James Spangler uh, to help out IHOC, uh, please contact the office and we'll make sure that information uh, gets there. We want to let you know that we will be continuing our men's breakfast and that will be on Saturday, February 17th at 8 a.m. Uh, at Amley's Omelette House here in Cherry Hill. And we're looking forward to that. It's always a good time. The Cherry Hill Food Pantry, which is something near and dear to our hearts. We are one of the founding churches of it. 
uh, we are looking for a couple of items, canned fruit, fruit cocktail, coffee, laundry detergent, toothpaste, and cake mix. So if you have any of those items, we would greatly appreciate if you could donate uh, them or you could pick them up uh, at the grocery store and bring them here to the church and we will be happy to get it over to the food pantry for you. The Anna Circle, uh, they will be meeting, uh, which is one of our women's circles, they will be meeting on Tuesday, February 6th at 10 a.m. in the lounge. Uh, we want to let you know that um, we will be ha sending out the um, year-end giving statements on Wednesday, February 7th. Uh, they will also be able to be picked up at church and they will be able to be picked up in the office. And the last announcement is, believe it or not, Lent is around the corner. And so what that means is we kick it off with Ash Wednesday. Now, Ash Wednesday happens to fall on Valentine's Day this year, February 14th. And as has been tradition, St. Andrews will be worshiping with Haddonfield. We will be worshiping at Haddonfield for Ash Wednesday on February 14th at 7 p.m. And so we're looking forward to being able to do that and to be able to worship with our brothers and sisters over at Haddonfield. Well, friends, those are the announcements we have for you. Let us continue in worship together. Well, friends, our scripture lesson today comes from the New Testament from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. And this is what our scripture has for us. I received a tradition from the Lord, which I also handed on to you. On the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord took the bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. He did the same thing with the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do this to remember me. Every time you eat and drink this cup, you broadcast the death of the Lord until he comes. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever taken a moment and just reflected on what you think communion is, or what you think communion is about. Maybe it's just the sacrament to you. Maybe it's a time where once a month in the Methodist church, we set aside time and we pause and we reflect and add something special to the service. Or maybe it's a gratitude meal. That's what I kind of want us to be able to begin to focus in on is this idea of a gratitude meal. There were two uh, individuals who would meet together, Jermaine and Michelle, and they would meet together monthly. They were co-workers for what they called a gratitude feast. And so they would sit down together and they'd have conversation about what was going on that was good in their life. So often when we get together, we just complain to each other about the situations that we're facing, right? But for Jermaine and Michelle, they took time and were purposeful about giving thanks. Well, they've been doing this for about a decade, and one day the tenor of the meal completely changed because Michelle, she was having a hard time being positive that day. And she explained that she had been waiting for years for a kidney transplant that her kidneys weren't working and that without a kidney, well, she probably wasn't gonna make it. Well, Jermaine couldn't, he, he couldn't watch his friends suffer any longer. What Jermaine actually did was he donated his kidney to his friend and they continued those meals afterwards. But there was a whole different connection and a whole different connection around the idea of a gratitude feast, a gratitude meal. What's going on in your heart as you spend time and we take communion together? Do you feel unworthy? Do you feel accepted? Do you feel rejection? Do you feel grace? Do you feel welcome? Do you feel loved? Do you feel sustenance? Do you feel indifference? Maybe the month depends upon how we're feeling as we come to the communion table. 
See, friends, Holy Communion is a means and a channel of God's grace. It's this opportunity for us to be able to come together, whether it be in person, whether it be online, to gather for a gratitude meal. A gratitude for all that God has given to us and the fact that we are celebrating God's grace. See, communion is both grounded in scripture and handed down from the earliest Christians through church tradition. It comes at Christ's invitation where all are invited to come forward and experience the grace found at the communion table. See, in our text, it's Paul's instruction to Corinthians who were abusing the feast for fun and games, and they were excluding others by not sharing the food that they bought for each other. That's from 1 Corinthians 11, 17 through 22. There are four basic actions involved in celebrating the Eucharist, or another word for Holy Communion. The first is take. We present the common elements of bread and wine, or in our case in the Methodist Church, juice. We bless, that's the second. We make the common elements sacred by retelling the the stories of God's saving and redeeming relationship with the world. The third is break. We break the bread, acting out uh, Jesus' self-giving, both on the cross and in his invitation in communion. And the last word is share or give, where we share the bread and we share the cup and we begin to feel Christ's presence. See, friends, the Holy Communion is both a proclamation of Jesus in a place or a moment where Jesus is spiritually present. If you want to know Jesus, you want to know who Jesus is, And what Jesus means, look no further than communion in the liturgy that we read. See, Jesus' presence, that's not merely memorial or symbolic, but rather a deep, it's abiding, it's a transformational presence in our lives. So the great Thanksgiving liturgy, which is what we call communion in the Methodist church, it contains words from the passage that was read. See, if we elaborate on Holy Communion, it proclaims that Jesus, describing God's story with the world to the time of Jesus' incarnation, it describes Jesus' mission and ministry in life, death, and resurrection. It describes in our liturgy Christ's invitation to Holy Communion itself. And it also describes communion that it has this role in sustaining Christ's presence in and through the church, through Christ's body of the church, until Christ comes again, as we say, in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet, where the sacrament of baptism initiates people into the church and the life of the church. Holy communion sustains the church until Christ comes again. See, in the Methodist tradition, communion is meant for all who earnestly repent and are not just members. It creates an evangelistic opportunity to extend Jesus' invitation to abundant life. John Wesley believed that communion was a converting grace. It was a converting sacrament that you could not know who God is, experience communion, and have that understanding of what Wesley called a warming of the heart. Wesley believed that communion should be celebrated frequently. Now in the Methodist Church, we celebrate once a month, don't we? But Wesley liked to celebrate it as often as he could. So Charles Wesley, he writes these Eucharistic or communion hymns that are a textbook and source of inspiration for the meaning of this sacrament that we celebrate together. We should ask ourselves some questions. How frequently do we take time to do communion? What is in our hearts as we come forward if we are in person in church? Or what is in our hearts 
as we are taking communion at home? What is our attitude? Is this experience that we take uh, is it automatic? Or does communion stir reflection about the length and the depth and the breadth and the height of God's love, not just for us, but for the world? See, remember that all disciples, new and seasoned disciples, God's grace is at work in communion, even when we come as we are. See, one of the beautiful things about being United Methodists is that we believe in an open table, that all are welcome to come and sit at the table, that there is always a place at the table for whomever wants to come. I want to close with a story highlighting just this. It's going to be about my daughter, Raylan. Now, I call my daughter, Raylan, my mini-me, and she really is. She's stubborn. But she also has some wonderful parts of her mother in her. The part that Raylan gets from her mom and not from me is her heart of love and care. Now, oftentimes I hear from her teacher and I just heard from our school director, Megan, this week about another example of the loving heart that my daughter Raylan has. There was a girl that had come and they were checking out the school here. And so they happened to go into Raylan's class. And Raylan was the one that went over and invited this little girl to come and play. Not just to set her off in the corner and to have her be all alone, but to bring her in to the table. To bring her into the play table to bring her into the classroom, to bring her into the environment. Friends, that's the power of the gospel. It's that invitation, like an invitation from Raylan. We don't have to be on the outside, but that we are welcome. We are welcome to belong, that we are called to be a part of something larger, as we work together at the church. See, friends, there's an important reminder that's offered with communion, and it's two words, for you. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Friends, just as the body and blood are given for us, The reminder is, is that the for you isn't just for you, but that the for you is for all. That is the power of the gospel. That is the power of Christ's sacrifice. Friends, I hope that as we experience communion moving forward, that we'll have it be a gratitude meal. A gratitude meal, not just something that we keep for ourselves, but a gratitude meal that we take what we experience, the grace, the love that we experience from Christ in this moment and bring it into a world that needs to experience grace and love. May we rise to the challenge of my daughter this week of being able to show grace and love to people that we've never met before. Because, friends, that is how we bring the communion table to all. Amen. This time we're going to take our tithes, our gifts, our offerings. If you would like to give something, we have our address and website up on the screen. We invite you to bow your heads and hearts with us as we prepare a blessing over the gifts received now and in person. Let us pray. God, all that you have given to us, what was indeed first yours. God, we give a portion back to you as a people full of thanksgiving, as a people who, as a people who are showing love and grace. God, we pray that as we give these gifts, that these gifts given now and on Sunday, that they would be used as beacons of your light, of your love in Cherry Hill and the surrounding area. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Final thoughts. Well, friends, as we prepare to go, may we use the example of Raylan. As we get older in life, it becomes harder to make friends. It becomes harder to interact with people that we don't know. But may we follow the example of Raylan. May we be people that welcome people that show other people that they belong, that there is a seat at the table, at the communion table that is waiting just for them. Because when they experience that, that invitation to belong, friends, that's how we are able to communicate God's light, God's love, and God's grace. May we have that strength of Raylan this week to go and to love those that we know and those that we don't know. That is the message of the communion table. Amen.